Why does Snoop Dogg carry an umbrella? Faux drizzle. So today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. I read 17 books. Four of them were graphic novels and four of them were audiobooks, so technically only like nine novels that I've read in print form. I have a lot to talk about, so let's just get right on into it. The first book I read this month was actually for school, so I don't own a copy of it, and that was Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I hated it. It was so hard to read. It was not interesting. Overall, didn't like it. Gave it one star. Don't want to talk about it. We'll never own it. So I read or listened to Beauty Queens by Libra Bray. It's about pageant girls where their plane falls and lands at a vacant island. I thought this would be a survival story and I heard it was funny so I was like oh it's because they're beauty queens I'm trying to figure stuff out. This is actually like a parody of society. It's pretty much just criticism of consumerism and advertising. It just has a huge variety of issues that this goes over, like from transphobia to feminism. It is a book about survival, but it definitely is done in like a very humorous style. It's not what you expect, and I was thoroughly surprised by this. I actually really, really liked it. You have to go into it knowing it's purposefully exaggerated because it is supposed to be satire of our society. Nevertheless, I felt like some parts were just a little bit too crazy, and that's why I decided to give this book four stars. What highly recommend. The next book I listened to was also an audiobook, so I've been kind of digging those lately. This is Naomi and Eli's No Kiss List by Richard Cohen and David Levithan. This one I wasn't a huge fan of. I've been finding lately that they write books that are good, they have good characters, but I feel like the plot just goes nowhere and at the end of this book I just was thinking, what was the point of that? This book is about a girl and a guy, a Naomi and Eli, and they basically have this no kiss list. The book doesn't even revolve around the no kiss list, it's just a a lot of drama about Eli kissing Naomi's ex. And again, it's just drama and I thought it was kind of petty. I felt like this went nowhere. I wouldn't really recommend this one. It was good because I liked the characters. I can never not like David Levithan and Rachel Cohen characters. Just was not a fan of this one. Gave it three stars. The next book I read is probably gonna be my number one of the year if I don't read anything better. This is a book a lot of people have been hyping and I just cannot stress enough how great it is. I read An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. Oh my goodness. This book is about a girl named Laia and her brother is stolen away from her by the evil army that follows the Empire. And she wants him back because he's her only family and so she enlists the help of the rebels of that city. She has to spy on the military base for the entire Empire deal. Inside that military base is Elias who is trying to escape because he does not like the way that the Empire is run. It's about how their paths tangle and cross and there's a lot of drama, a lot of espionage, so much good stuff occurring. I adored this book. It's been a long time since I've read a book that I care about so much. The writing is just beautiful and I have a review up of this so I'm not going to spend time raving about this. I'll just link that review down below but I thought the characters were amazing. I thought the book was amazing. Absolutely five stars. Best book of 2015 so far. Am I right ladies? The next book I read was Faking Normal by Courtney C. Stevens. This book is about a girl who has a traumatic event happen to her one summer and so as she's trying to recover from that she's kind of self-harming and she's having to hide this event from everyone and so it's about her dealing with inner demons and then the boy next door ends up having a tragedy happen to him and he has to move in with them and it's about their friendship. Overall, I think this book was just amazing. I really like how it dealt with the serious topics, but I thought it was so beautiful mainly because the relationship in this book is friendly. This book deals with mental illness in a healthier way than I see a lot of times and I thought it was done really well. There were a couple of times in this book where I felt like she had the opportunity to just come clean and she wouldn't and that was a little bit frustrating. Once again, the main thing I love about this book is the relationship between the boy next door and her and it's just so low burning and supportive that it just gave me warm fuzzies even though it was kind of a dark book. I highly recommend this book if you want a book on the topic of sexual assault. I gave this book four stars. Next book I listened to was Panic by Lauren Oliver. This book is about a town where every single year the seniors who graduate enter a competition called Panic and it's basically do these really dangerous dares and you can win a sum of money. It's about a girl who enters Panic and her adventures doing Panic. Well, I enjoyed this and it was definitely entertaining which I think that's what you have to go into this for is just expect to be entertained. It's not 
amazing writing. It's not the best characters in the entire world. I just liked it for the entertainment value. You know, it was fun in the time, but now I'll probably never reread it. It was all right. I give it three stars. I listened to another audiobook. What do you know? So that new audiobook I started was Counting by Sevens by Holly Goldberg Sloan. This book's a middle grade about a girl who is very, very smart. And one day her parents die. And it's just about her dealing with those emotions and having to figure out how to cope. I thought it was all right. I think I was expecting more because the beginning of this is so powerful because she's so smart. You see her mindset where she's just so intelligent and I really love that about her. I think that's a great role model for middle grade kids to be reading about. There was only about a hundred pages of this book that I enjoyed and the rest was just kind of sad. So overall this just kind of felt flat for me. I felt like it was another one of those books where I put it down and I was like, well what was the point? I gave this three and a half stars. The next book I read is also probably going to be my number two, number three book of 2015. Whew, so good. This book is Easy by Tamara Weber. Holy guacamole guys. This book is about a girl in college named Jacqueline and pretty much it follows just her experiences in college. Basically a guy that saves her from being sexually assaulted and then for the rest of the book it's about her coping with that and then getting to know that guy. The characters in this and the way the relationship is done and how everything is written is amazing. The thing I love the most about this is that it is the most beautiful perfect relationship I've ever read, read about ever. So that's saying something. Sexual assault was dealt with in this book extremely extremely well and I think that this should be a model for other books to go off of. Read this. Read it. If you're okay with like a little steamy stuff. It's just like this much because this changed my life. The next book I read was Siege and Storm by Lee, Bar Lee Bardugo. This is the second book in the Grisha trilogy. The first book is Shadow and Bone. It's a trilogy that's in an alternate universe fantasy Russia. It basically just follows people with powers and of course our main character has a power and she discovers that she has talents that are very good and could save the world, literally. So it's her adventures trying to stop a bad guy who was a very beautiful and lovely and charming bad guy. So this is just the continuation. We get to meet a couple new characters. Overall, I just really enjoy the Grisha trilogy. I absolutely love the world. I love the conflict between the good and the bad. I think that the dialogue in this book, the writing is just so incredible. It's so realistic. Like I've feel like I'm in the book whenever I read this book. However, the only problem I have with this is that it just wasn't that dramatic. It didn't have very many exciting scenes. So because of that, I gave it four and a half stars. Otherwise, I really enjoyed it. The next book I read was Falling For You by Lisa Schroeder. Lisa Schroeder typically writes in verse, but this book is her actual full-length novel. This book's about a girl who has an abusive dad or stepfather, and so she kind of has a job and she goes to school to get away from him, and then one day she meets the new guy at school. He kind of takes her away from her drama at home, but then she realizes he might not be as good as she originally thought he was for her. So it deals with a lot of abusive topics and just finding a safe place for yourself. And I thought it was overall a pretty good book. It had a great, great message. But the reason why I took a star off of this book is because the main character was just a little bit unrelatable because she was so passive in her situation. So I thought that was a little bit frustrating. I gave this book four stars. I still thought it was a really great book on the topic of, like I said, abuse. So if you're looking for something like this, I would recommend it. The next book I read was The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black, another book that will probably make my top 10. This book follows a town that has fairies and humans coexisting. There's this boy that lives on a hill in a glass coffin and he's been asleep for supposedly centuries and one day he wakes up. So it just follows from there. Lots of paranormal. I thought this book was great. This is a fantasy or paranormal standalone. So first of all, highly recommend because of that. I just absolutely loved the characters and the writing of this book. I love that this is a book that has a gay relationship. This I definitely applaud for having that in it. It was just so 
cute. I actually had to put the book down because I started fangirling so hard. It had amazing action. It was just very believable. I loved the characters. I honestly cannot choose something I didn't like about this book. I gave this five stars. Highly recommend. The next book I read I got from the library, so alas, I do not have it. But I read Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo, the last book in the Grisha trilogy. This book I only gave four stars. I felt like this one did begin to noticeably drag. I was bored for the first 150 or so pages. There wasn't a lot of action between the antagonist and Alina, the protagonist, so I was just wanting more confrontation, more things exploding, if you know what I mean. Again, I love the writing. I love how realistic the dialogue is. I did cry reading this one. Um, Give me a second. A lot of people said that this was a very cop-out ending and they don't like it, so I kind of went into it expecting that. Honestly, I don't have a problem with it. I just felt like it was average. I mean, I can live with it. I'm not upset about it. And as far as recommending the Grisha trilogy, I definitely would say go for it. If you like the first one, you'll probably enjoy all three of them. I think the second one was my favorite. The next book I read was a graphic novel, and that is American Born Chinese by Jean Luen Yang. The main gist of this book is that a uh, boy immigrates from China to the US and he's just kind of trying to get in with the populations, you know how it goes. But overall, I was just really unimpressed with this one. I felt like it didn't really add up to me. There was nothing funny about it. People kept saying, oh, it's so funny. I didn't think it was funny. I was just again, a book I finish and go, what's the point? So I was kind of just frustrated, didn't get it. I'm probably gonna get rid of this, so. Um, I also read Hopeless by Colleen Hoover this month. It's about a girl who goes to school for the first time for her senior year after being homeschooled for a while, and she meets a guy there, and then memories from her past start to resurface being around him. I just felt like in the end, this book handled a lot of different serious topics mostly for dramatic effect. I was not very impressed with the way that they were handled and I just didn't really believe it. I felt like the relationship was just so badly timed and I did not like the relationship together. I'm just gonna link you to my review if you really want to hear me talk about it. I was not a fan. I will definitely continue reading Colleen Hoover's other books, but I gave this book three stars. The last three books are graphic novels I read from the library, so I don't have them. The next graphic novel I read this month was Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. This book is actually a collection of short stories. I think there's four or five of them. I love this book. I really, really wish I had it with me so I could show you the art style. It is by far my favorite art from any graphic novel I've ever read. I thought the stories were so creepy, so much so that I would sometimes be nervous turning a page because you know that something's gonna come out. I would just highly recommend this book. If you get scared easily, maybe not, but I still think they were very creepy. The only thing is I felt like some of the stories were a little bit confusing. The next graphic novel I read was Lock and Key Volume 1. It just wasn't my favorite art. And then the story itself I felt was a little bit draggy. It was just okay. I wouldn't recommend them. I mean, it only took me like 45 minutes to read, so it wasn't that much of a waste of time, but still, I just wasn't that invested into the story, so I'm not gonna continue it. I gave it three and a half stars. And the last book I read this month was the graphic novel This One Summer. I don't know who it's by, but I need to because I am buying it ASAP. This won the Prince Award as well this year, I believe. So it's just kind of a coming of age story about her and her friend as they are on their adventures on the beach. I love this book mainly just because I'm a sucker for any sort of summer vacation book. And though it was a bit deep and there were a lot of topics that is not like light summer reading, I still felt it was a very enjoyable read. This is the first graphic novel I've ever read where I've connected or related to a character. I loved the art of this book. It was all purple drawings and I felt like the drawings themselves were just so detailed and beautiful. And it's a pretty big book so I was impressed. There was so much room for character development that did not occur that I was just a little bit let down at the end and therefore I gave it four and a half stars but still really enjoyed it. Still gonna buy it for my shelf. Still recommend it. All right, all right, all right, all right. So that is all for this video. I hope to see you next month. Look out for my TBR. Until then, hope you're having a nice day. Hope you read a lot of books. Hope you will be reading a lot of books over the summer. Have a nice life. Goodbye, everyone.